What is going on? Aaron here coming at you with another Next Step Outdoors gear review. I could not be more excited because right now I am finally getting to put together this video that I've had in the works for the past six months, testing five of the absolute cheapest trail cameras on amazon.com. And you and I are gonna go through the results together. I'll run through the price, the specs and some samples of the pictures so you can make an educated decision which one is the best fit for you. Before we begin, smash that like button and subscribe to my channel. From my experience, it's a much better use of your money to have several good quality cameras versus one or two really high-end cameras. What this allows you to do is cover more areas and more effectively pattern the deer that you're hunting. I want as much of that critical intel as possible to increase my odds as much as possible come fall. So I'm always on the hunt for the absolute cheapest trail cameras I can find without sacrificing a certain level of performance. So now to walk you through the process of how I actually selected these five specific cameras out of all of the trail cameras on Amazon, I first wanted a trail camera that was right around the $50 mark. And some of these have fluctuated up and down since I originally ordered. But what I've found is there's a really good market for cameras, $100, $150, but what I'm trying to do is leverage my capital as much as possible and find something that's really, really affordable so I can buy more than I would if I was to buy the higher end cameras. The second thing I was looking for was a trail camera that had both photo and video options. Video is super, super valuable. It's amazing what you can learn from a 10 second clip versus just a still image of a picture. You can see a buck's demeanor. You can see what direction the deer are traveling a lot better, what they're doing, what they're feeding on. It can tell you a whole story. So I wanted to at least have the capability to do video. The third thing that I was looking for was an average of at least four stars on amazon.com. And I know there's a lot of ways that companies manipulate and incentivize people to leave above average reviews better than they would otherwise, but it's at least a starting point. And then what I did is I went through all of those reviews reviews, looked at the customer provided pictures, found the best quality I could and came up with these five. Each of these trail cameras advertise almost the same exact specs, a 20 to 24 megapixel camera, 1080p video, a 0.2 or 0.3 second trigger speed and an 80 foot infrared flash. The only exception, otherwise it would be a complete level playing field, is that one of these has a no glow flash. So instead of the low glow infrared flash where it's just a faint red glow. There is one out of all of these that has a no glow, completely invisible flash. And we'll get to that in a second. Now that the stage is set, let's dive into the computer. So the first one and the worst one, in my opinion, was the Hawk Ray Mini. But keep in mind right now, as I'm filming this, that camera is $37 on amazon.com. So for $37, it's really not all that bad. But out of the five, I thought it performed at the lowest level. As you can see here, all of the pertinent information is down below on the bar. You have the moon phase, temperature, time, date, and even what number picture it is. Here's me walking by holding a shed that I just scooped up. I'm not walking super fast, but I am pretty good focus, pretty sharp. In this one, there's a lot of details missing. It's really hard to see what's going on. There's some deer in the very background you can barely even see. But here's another example of a running deer. It is pretty good focus for a $37 camera, but there was plenty of pictures that weren't as good quality as this one. The night pictures really weren't all that great, but they were good enough to get the job done. Here's a buck. You can't really tell how many points he has, but if your goal is just to cover as many spots as possible and just inventory the deer and have a general sense of what is in the area. This camera is gonna do just fine for you. A lot of these pictures, it was snowing, so there's a little bit of snow hitting the lens. And when the deer were stationary, the camera actually did pretty well. Here you can see a whole pile of does. They're pretty far away from the camera, and the flash does a decent job. It's a little bit grainy. Overall, not the best camera, but again, for $37, might be worth considering. Now we'll jump into the video. I personally thought the video performed better than the pictures. So if you're looking for a cheap camera that you can run on video mode on a scrape or something like that, this might be a good option for you. Didn't take long for the deer to start finding the fresh maple leaves from the trees that I'd cut down. Hopefully his daddy and his daddy's daddy come back. But even with hard lighting, the camera performed decent. I'm perfectly fine with that for just $37. Here's a couple samples of that dusk time frame where it's right in between daytime and nighttime. I think it'd be worth considering if you're looking for a really, really budget camera. Now we'll take a look at a couple of the nighttime videos. Here's a mama raccoon and her babies, but they're about 15 yards from the camera. And even as small as those little things are, you can still see them pretty well. Here's some more raccoon action for you. It's not a bad camera, but out of the five, I thought 
it had the worst performance. I wouldn't count it out, especially at that price point if it's that much cheaper than the rest of them. Second to last place would have actually been my second place pick as far as overall performance of pictures and videos go, but it does have a very, very quiet, high frequency, high pitch noise that it makes when the infrared flash goes off. So if I was gonna be running this camera, I'd probably run it 10 feet up in a tree. I'd use a climbing stick and hang it up high. So that way maybe it's just a little bit out of reach and maybe the deer don't hear it as much. That said, I didn't have that many deer that were actually looking at the camera every time it went off. It's just one of those things that I'm not willing to risk as I try to improve as a deer hunter and increase my odds of harvesting a mature buck. The bar at the bottom has all of the information that you would need to have the temperature and moon phase. I think that's interesting to be able to study. And then also the time and date, which are absolute requirements, in my opinion. But here's a nice Tom. And then I thought this was a cool picture. Look at this raccoon. I've never seen a raccoon with ears that color. It's a very sharp picture. Again, overall performance, I would rank this second place out of all of them, but due to the noise that the infrared flash make, I ranked it second to last. Even in a blizzard, you can see these deer very clear. So now we'll check out some of the nighttime pictures. All of these cameras in this price range, if they're deer moving, especially at night, there's oftentimes a little bit of blur, but it wasn't bad enough to really impact being able to see or decipher what was actually in the picture. The infrared flash on this camera is right in line with just about every other camera on the market right now. This buck is probably 20 yards away from the camera. You can count his points. Again, there's just that very, very faint noise that it makes. It's just a high pitch frequency. It's just one of those things I'm not willing to risk when there's other options out there. Now we'll check out some of the video. And one thing that I learned about this new property that I got access to this spring is there is an absolute ton of turkeys and I didn't turkey hunt at all this spring. I did realize that I screwed up the date on this and didn't set it properly. This was not in February by any means. Really clear videos, even when the deer are moving, they're really, really sharp. If it wasn't for that noise, this camera would be an absolute slam dunk. Here's a perfect example of why I love running my cameras on video mode. If that doesn't get you fired up, then there's something wrong with you. Here's a really cool buck. I know he made it through the season and I'm shocked that I didn't have a shed from him laying on my property because I had so many pictures and videos of this guy. The video is really good, but again, the downfall is that the entire time that this video is recording at night, it's emitting that high pitch frequency. Clearly the deer don't seem to mind, the raccoons don't seem to mind. Just one of those things that, are you gonna risk it? The details are fantastic here. You can even see a little mouse jumping around and the buck checking them out. It's just cool to see animals interact with each other. So coming in right at the middle of the pack was by Vu Peak. This camera would have been ranked below the Exteller, but it jumped up by default due to the issues that we discussed. It's a sweet little cam. As I like to always point out, it's got the information bar at the bottom, so you have everything for your reference. There's a lower light daytime picture. The one doe is a little bit blurry, but overall, not a bad picture at all. Here's a little turkey action for you, but it's nice, crisp, in focus. And then I thought this was kind of a funny picture. Obviously you don't want your deer staring at your cameras. I generally try to hide them a little bit better and I really do hang most of my cameras high, seven to 10 feet up just so it's out of the direct line of sight of these deer. The nighttime images is where I was left desiring more out of this camera. They tended to be a little more grainy and a lot less sharp than some of the other cameras. Here you got a buck and a bedded doe. Really can barely even tell what that doe is or what's going on there. If your goal is just to cover a lot of ground and pattern these deer to the best of your ability, I think this camera is gonna be perfectly adequate for what its intended use is. Now we'll take a look at the video. I thought the video was pretty exceptional. I think the blizzard shots are really cool. The snow's coming down, really pretty setting. Here's a young buck just browsing on some vegetation. Next time I'm in here checking this camera, I'm gonna actually look at what those plants are and ID them so I can reference that moving forward. This is exactly why I run my cameras on video mode. It's just really cool to see the deer's demeanor. Both of their ears are pinned back and they don't want anything to do with each other. And here, if you look in the background, there is an absolute ton of turkeys. I am beating my head against the wall, pissed that I didn't go and try to turkey hunt out here this year. The night videos were pretty good, a lot better than the pictures in my opinion. I thought they were pretty clear for as grainy as some of the pictures ended up being. If you watch this really closely, you actually see this buck shed his antler on camera. I'm just kidding, but that would be pretty cool though, and it's only a matter of time until I get one. This buck is a really cool rack. I'm excited to see him this year. He had a really unique kind of palmated end of his one beam, so hopefully he's some crazy non-typical this year. But again, I thought this camera performed well. It's a really good price point, tiny little camera, 
and it performed just fine. The runner up out of all five of these cameras was the Woo Soda or Woo Soda. I don't know how you say it, but it's a phenomenal little camera. Here you have all these does. Pretty sure that one right up front is pregnant. They're checking out the trophy rack. Not really sure what it is. I just put this camera out. Just like the rest of the cameras, it does have that information bar at the bottom, which is awesome. Here's a really nice two-year-old that I had a lot last season. I'm banking on him being around this year. I think he's a resident buck. And I think I actually did this camera a disservice placing it where I did because as you can see, there's brush on both sides of this little lane. So I think the focus the flash, everything would have been even better if it was just a direct line of sight to where I was trying to take pictures and videos to. And as you can see in this picture, the details are impeccable. I was very satisfied with the nighttime performance with this camera. I do think that the range of the flash would have been better if I did not have it set up the way I did. I think the brush really blocked the range of this flash and it would have performed much better. But even still, I thought it did a really good job. Now we'll check out some of the video. That buck is 25, 30 yards away from the camera, shooting through the brush, and you can still see very clearly what that buck is. You can count tines. Here's me coming in a couple days later and picking up his shed antler. There's ice on the lens that I didn't notice, otherwise I would have cleaned that off. But here's me looking for the other side. Unfortunately, did not find it. And then this was a really cool buck that I had. He had a really nice frame to him, just not a lot of tines. As you can see, that deer in the back even is really, really clear. I'm just super, super pumped for the performance of this camera. Second place, the runner up, so it's not quite as good as the other one, but you can't go wrong with the Woo Soda, Woo Soda. Now we'll look at the nighttime videos. Here, even in a snowstorm, the image is super clear. The video is crisp. It's really cool to see that buck. That's the same one that I got a shed antler to. As I mentioned multiple times already, I think if I would have set this camera up a little bit differently, the flash would have had a lot more range to it, which would allow you to see into that field more. You never know what kind of wildlife is gonna walk in front of your camera. And that's one thing I really, really like about running trail cameras. Great camera, highly recommend. Gets my stamp of approval and my thumbs up. Coming in at number one, the grand champion, the top performer, is the Vickery and the Vickery actually has a no glow invisible flash which I am super pumped about because I ranked this camera number one before I even realized that. Once I noticed that, I actually tested all these cameras again in a dark room just to make sure, but this is the only one out of the five that has that invisible flash. So if you're looking for a camera that is a great performer and you don't want people or animals to be able to see this thing at night at all, that is gonna be a great option for you. For the price, the images from this camera were crystal clear. Here you see the shed buck with those big old bases right on top of his head. Here's that cool year and a half Old buck again with the palmated side. I'm really curious to see what he's going to turn into this year. There's a lot going on in this picture. There's that deer walking across the middle of the screen, but there's also a bunch of deer down below in the river bottom. Overall, the daytime pictures were really good. They weren't quantum leaps ahead of the other cameras, but they still overall performed better than the other cameras. I have other trail cameras that have that invisible flash or that blackout flash or whatever you want to call it, and I've noticed that they just don't seem to perform at the same level as the regular infrared flash, but I thought this camera did a great job. Overall, the Vickery had the best still images at night, which is exceptional, especially for a no glow flash. Now we'll take a look at some of the video. Here you have deer down below in the river bottom. There's deer up top in the background. There's just a pile of deer on this property. I thought this next video was really cool. These are actually a bunch of young bucks if you watch through all the sequence here, which I didn't include but I don't know if these deer are playing or if they're being aggressive or what. Let me know what you guys think. And then I've also had quite a few coyotes through here, so I might have to try my hand at some predator hunting for the first time. Bottom line is this camera just performed really, really well, worth every penny, and I plan to actually pick up a few more, especially after learning that it's actually a no-go flash. So we'll take a look at some of the nighttime video now. Here's another perfect example of why I like running my cameras on video mode. It's just really, really cool to see deer interact with other animals. This deer's butt is a little bit washed out, but it's right in front of the camera, dead center in the middle of that flash, so I'm not gonna be too mad about anything like that. Just look at it. This camera's nighttime performance is right on par with even some $150 and $200 trail cameras that I have in my rotation at a fraction of that price. So in conclusion, none of these cameras are actually bad, and given the fact that you can get some of these for $37 on Amazon right now, they definitely serve their purpose and perform at an adequate level. I only suggest products that I definitely believe in, and I personally feel that you cannot go wrong with any of these, so monitor their prices on Amazon. But again, the grand champion right here, the Vickery, that's my favorite camera. That's the one that I'm gonna be picking up more. 
and that's the one that I would recommend to you. Trail cameras are one of the best scouting tools available to us hunters. So if you wanna check any of these out, I'll actually link to these down below in the description so you can take a look for yourself. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, make sure you follow along. I have some really exciting things going on this fall and I wanna go on this journey together. Let's become the best deer hunters that we are capable of becoming. We'll figure this thing out together. I'll give you as much value as I can along the way. But thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys in the next video.